And for more on our earlier story on border security and control, we're joined on the news at 10 by former Army spokesman, Brigadier General Sonny Osman. He joins us live from our Abuja studio. Good evening. Thank you for joining us on the news at 10. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Well, border control has again been brought to the fore, particularly with the situation in Niger and how it might affect at least seven states in Nigeria with several illegal entry points. But can you tell us what, in your opinion, is a major challenge of border control and security in Nigeria? There is no doubt about the fact that uh, Nigeria is having a serious challenge with border security because of uh, the cross-border criminal activities, uh, you know, and uh, these uh, borders on um, arms trafficking, not just necessarily uh, smuggling of banned goods and contrabands, arms trafficking, human trafficking, and so many other things. And if you are even talking about that, uh, apart from what brought about the illegal, you know, border crossing, so to speak, uh, in the northern part of the country, with Niger Republic alone, we share a total 1,608 kilometers length of border. So it is very difficult to police it. And uh, given the resources available, and given the cultural and socio-economic relationship, between the Nigerians and their respective border uh, counterparts in other countries. Take, for instance, in Cameroon, Niger, Chad, and Benin Republic. You can understand that it is very, very difficult to police the border. But that notwithstanding, uh, it can be done in the sense that uh, we have the capacity if we are determined. And uh, most importantly, the issue of the use of technology and Again, harnessing the resources in terms of the security architecture. And uh, apart from the security architecture, we should be talking about what happened to the, you know, border community uh, commissions and what have you. And most importantly, again, what is the relationship between the Nigerian state and its neighboring countries? Then, of course, we have to also involve international partners. So invariably, we can be able to effectively police our borders if all these things are put together to ensure that uh, every key player is brought on board and uh, the person is uh, doing his or her best as the case may be. And uh, I know that those who are statutorily responsible for, you know, uh, for listening to the, uh, the, the border, take for instance the Nigerian Immigration Service, and the Nigerian customs, they are doing the best they could, but uh, they need to be supported with more modern day technology. You know, take for instance, what do they have in terms of equipment, you know, to police the border? We, we, we just saw the pictures of, uh, you know, some of our, you know, outposts there. They, they look like an ISO, and uh, that in itself is not motivating enough, but that is even just an outpost. What of other equipment, what, are, what of the other resources needed to effectively police the border? Motivation for the personnel of the security agencies, all these things put together, they, 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 they add to the challenges that we're having. Uh, the situation uh, that we have reported time and again, it is said that the insecurity uh, along the border is ex ex exacerbated by extortion on the road by the same security agencies who are meant to protect the borders. So uh, if we're talking about a lack of manpower, lack of technology, is that also responsible uh, for security agencies essentially dropping the ball? I think there is no excuse whatsoever for any government official or public service, uh, servant to be corrupt. You know, instead of him or her performing his duty effectively and professionally, we resort to extorting the citizen that he or she is working for. There is no excuse whatsoever. However, we know the kind of situation we find ourselves in this country, and uh, usually, uh, the police tend to say that you should not encourage the criminal. By that, you should not create an enabling environment for these criminal tendencies to take place. And there is no excuse whatsoever for it, that notwithstanding. But I think there is need to critically look at uh, 
you know, the, the condition under which they serve and the condition under which they operate. So invariably you can be able to eliminate this. And usually criminal activities or corruptions, for instance, it involves two parties, the giver and the taker. Right. Nigerians tend to cut corners if the law says that you should not do this, this, this and that. And of course, you can effectively carry out your business without resourcing to cutting corners. You don't have to give bribe to anybody. So it takes two to tango. So we need to work assiduously, you know, encouraging Nigerians to be forthright in terms of their business dealings. And at the same time, discouraging this official from, you know, acts of unprofessional conduct. And of course, the law should be expeditious in dealing with such people if they are found wanting. So basically, that is it. But at the same time, we have to enhance the conditions right. under which they operate. But they, they are not magicians. They have to work with particularly other components of Nigerian society, especially the border, community, uh, border communities in, in, in the country. And there are no infrastructures. In fact, I might say they are totally neglected. I could remember a particular local government in the northeastern part of this country that local government is barely 35 kilometers, you know, to, to our uh, to, to, to Niger Republic, our neighboring country. But I can rest assure you, as of the last time I was there, there was no motorable road. When I mean motorable road, not even the different Larry Kwanyan road. So you can imagine those kind of people to, they have been neglected and totally abandoned. So they, are, they will resort to all sorts of things and they will compromise and cut corners. And at the same time, they might even induce some of these officials. And in any case, you might not be able to get the desired support and cooperation from them. So it's a collective thing. So much as you look at, uh, you know, the, 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 the security agencies, you know, policing our borders, we should also see how best we can support them by enhancing the welfare and well-being right. of the border communities. And I know of a certain uh, individual that, uh, you know, sometimes whenever the officials also are having one important engagement, it is the smuggler that will fund the social activities. That shouldn't be so. Right. So, so a lot of things need to be, you know, no, uh, be looked into. It, it is not just the issue of the security agencies themselves, but of course the average Nigerian, especially the border community. But of course you don't blame them right. simply because they tend not to be you know, given the sense of belonging they desire. Well, clearly, uh, there's a job of work for this government to do. We would like to thank you so much, uh, Brigadier General Sonny Osman, former Undoubtedly Army so. spokesman, uh, for sharing your thoughts with us on the news at 10 to 9. And all eyes definitely will be on the ministers who have a role to play when it comes to security. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, too.